Hey guys, what's up? Today she is back. You guys seem to have really liked this wig, so I decided to bring her back. Oh, also, this is gonna be the record between the beeps challenge because my smoke and carbon monoxide alarm has been beeping every 25 seconds all day today. It's pretty fun. Yeah, especially when you have to film. Pretty convenient. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I thought I would bring the rich bitch back for round two, this time, New Year's edition. How could you be beeping? I just disconnected you! I took out your battery! How could- Don't interrupt me! <laughs> I've already gone and clipped my wig back so it's out of the way and not in front of my face. And I'm gonna do my skin more or less the same way that I did last time. I'm going to start off with the Tatcha Silk Canvas. This is a very expensive, although very, very good primer. And I'm just going to use the little spatula it comes in. I just like to do kind of one stroke across and it picks up product up to the line and that's how much product they recommend using. I'm gonna take that and just apply it all over. It can also be used as an eyeshadow primer and a lip primer. But I kind of like to concentrate it over my problem areas, so wherever I'm breaking out and I've got a little bit more texture. And then in areas that I crease a lot, like right here, my nose has a bit of trouble keeping foundation on it. And I also like to take it under my eyes. It is a really good concealer primer. There was like no intro this time, huh? I just jump straight into it. Well, today I'm gonna to be doing a New Year's Eve look, a very rich New Year's Eve look, because we want to attract good things in the new year. We wanna get that bread in the new year. So, hopefully by looking rich, we'll become it. You know, fake it till you make it. That's, yeah. Next up, I'm gonna be using Tatcha's The Pearl in the color Moonlight, and this is their eye cream and concealer hybrid. Oh yeah, let me just show you how to open this because I had the hardest time opening it. I thought that this spun around with it, so I kept trying to spin it. Not the case. You just spin the top part. That little circle stays right there. And you may have noticed, it's a little Pokeball. So I love it because of that too. So it looks like this. It's basically a concealer, but also an eye cream. And so I take literally this much. That's all I need. I use this on days where I'm not wearing makeup and I just wanna hide these circles under my eyes. So that's what I use this for mainly, but I thought I'd include it today to show you guys because I've never shown this product in a video and I do use it quite often. So I like to dab it on like that. And then I just go in and I find that you have to like really kind of rub it in. Otherwise it can look a little like, I don't know how to explain it, grainy but as soon as you rub it in, it looks great. So I just like applying that with my finger and it just looks like skin, it's amazing. It just gives a little bit of brightness under the eyes. And if you don't like wearing makeup on a regular basis, I think this is a really great product because it's just really fast and just adds a little bit of something without being like actual makeup. So I know that last time I used a higher end color corrector, but today I'm just gonna stick with my LA Girl Pro Conceal in the color yellow corrector. And I know that this costs like, I don't actually know how much it costs, but it's under $10 but I like the way it performs, so you can still look rich on a budget is all I'm saying. I just use this to color correct all my little blemishes, and today I was noticing how well my skin is doing. Like, it has improved so much. I went and watched an old video of mine, and my skin looked so much worse, and I was like, whoa, I didn't think the difference was that big, but... Yeah, it is. So I'm thinking about doing a skincare video soon for you guys. And I know a lot of you have been asking for it and I think I'm finally comfortable. I finally found a product combination that has been working really, really well for my skin. So as you can see, this kind of does the heavy lifting in terms of hiding all my blemishes. A lot of people come to me and they say, oh, I have a lot of acne. 
Can you recommend any full coverage foundations? And I always say you don't need it, you just need to color correct because your whole face doesn't have to suffer because of a few problem areas. Full coverage I only recommend for very extreme cases and it's not the majority. If you just have regular breakouts, I'd say color correct them and then you can use normal foundation on your face. You don't need to cake it on and that oftentimes makes it look even worse. So you want to use as little product as possible. I'm also going to apply some right here, just the tiniest bit to help brighten that up even more. See the yellow takes care of the redness around my nose, it takes care of my breakouts. And I use yellow on a lot of different skin tones, doesn't matter what your undertone is. If you have really dark skin, then I would recommend an orange color corrector to combat any sort of acne scarring and stuff like that. Now I'm gonna go in with the Milk Makeup Skin Tint because this makes my skin look gorgeous. And if we wanna channel that inner rich bitch, you wanna look like you have the healthiest skin in the world. And this does it. So I mix medium and light. You just press it down and then roll it on your face. So I tend to use medium around the perimeter of my face and then I use light on the high points. Now you can go in with a brush or a beauty blender. I just like using my fingers for this. I just find that with my fingers I get a really perfect application and I don't waste any product. Oh, look at that skin already. Oh my god. So the Sunshine Skin Tint, if you don't know, it's basically an oil-based tinted moisturizer. Milk Makeup has their Sunshine Oil, and it comes in the same packaging. This is that oil mixed with pigment, and it just goes on beautifully on the face. Please ignore me lifting my lace right now. And even though it is oil-based, I find that it stays on all day on my skin. I wear this to work on set where I have like 12 to 14 hour days and it always lasts all day. Granted, I have combination skin, so I do get some really dry patches and then an oily t-zone but it works great for me if you have oilier skin i would just recommend priming really well and then just setting your oilier areas and as with skincare you never really want to drag your skin because that can make your skin wrinkle prematurely whenever i'm applying anything with my fingers i always like tapping and if i am going to drag always in an upward motion. So if you're ever applying moisturizers, I'd say tap or drag in an upward motion as much as possible anyway. So as you can see, my skin looks like an oil slick, but I love that kind of look. It just looks super healthy. It looks like you take care of your skin really well. I just think it's a much more flattering look than totally matte all over the face. Now I'm gonna go in with the Milk Flex Concealer in the color Vanilla, and I'm gonna apply that all over my little blemishes just for some added coverage because this foundation does not have a lot of coverage. As I said, it's more of a tinted moisturizer than anything else. And my concealer, I always like patting it in with my finger rather than a beauty blender so that none of the product gets absorbed because with concealer, you're usually applying it because you want to cover something up. And so I want maximum pigmentation from it. I don't want anything absorbing the product at all. And as you can see, I get great coverage from it. This applies pretty much to any concealer. Even if I apply my foundation with a sponge or a brush, I always like to do my concealer with my fingers. Then I'm gonna take the Flex Concealer in the color creme and I just like using that right in this inner corner under my eyes just to brighten it up a little bit it's totally optional but I really like the look of when I do that don't need a lot a little bit goes a long way I think I'm also gonna do some matte highlighting with this just on the highest points of my face just a little bit on the cheekbones as I said, I like using the least amount of product possible. I don't like caking my face on with a ton of product. Okay, I know that last time I used the Hourglass powder. This time I'm gonna be using the Milk Makeup Powder. No, I am not sponsored by Milk. I just really, really like their complexion products. And wow, I don't know if you can see that. There's just like a cloud of powder in front of my face. So I'm gonna make sure there's no creasing under my eyes and then go in 
with a little brush just so I can concentrate that powder where I need it. I'm using their translucent light by the way and then on my forehead a little bit. Next up, I think it's no surprise to anyone, I'm gonna go in with the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer Sticks in the color Baked and Blaze. I'm gonna use Baked first. It's the lighter one. I like using the lighter one as a bronzer and then the darker one more as contour, but I always start with a lighter one. And I find that using all milk products, the textures just blend so well together. It really does make the application pretty seamless. That's why I kind of stick to just milk products for my face. Look at that. I mean, look at that skin. I look so fucking rich. I look like I get a facial every week. Also apply a little bit here and then to the sides of my nose. I have never gotten a facial before, by the way. I wanted to get one after Halloween, kind of treat myself. That didn't happen. I also like taking this around my forehead and under my bottom lip. Seriously, look at that skin. Oh. Then I'm gonna go in with Blaze to deepen my contour. And I'm gonna take it on a NYX number 12 brush. It's a small fluffy brush. And this way I can just kind of concentrate my application a little bit more, be more precise with it. I just apply it very strategically just to deepen the contours a little bit more. I'm also going to further contour my nose with this and I'm bringing that contour all the way up into where my brow starts. I will not be filling in my brows so I always like to bring up that contour and really define kind of this area. I find that it just, I don't know, gives more structure to the face. Especially if you want to be super discreet about a nose contour, you don't have to bring it all the way down the nose. If you just contour like the beginning of the nose bridge, it already does wonders. I think I'm also going to take that color and apply it right to the outer corners of my mouth. You'll see that just makes my lips look a little bit more pouty. I'm gonna try a new lid primer today and that is the Smashbox Photo Finish Lid Primer in the color white. I'm gonna make sure there's no creases on my eyelids and then apply that and blend it out. Feels pretty silky, pretty smooth. I think I will set it with a bone color eyeshadow. I'm just gonna go in with the Smashbox Cover Shot Matte Palette. I'm gonna use this color right here. I'm just going to pat that all over. I don't know if this primer needs setting, but it's gonna do a light wash of that. Definitely brightens up the eyelids. Just taking my powder brush and making sure there are no sticky areas. So you guys wanted to see me playing with the Pat McGrath palette a bit more. I wanted to play with the Pat McGrath palette a bit more. So that's what's going on today. I will be using my Mothership 5 palette yet again. This is the Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction. And she's just so beautiful. Like I honestly, I'm still not over how pretty this is. Today I'm going to be using different colors from the palette. I'm also going to be combining it with another eyeshadow from a different palette that I want to try. But this is going to be the base. This time I'm going to be doing a purple look. First of all, because there's a purple eyeshadow from the Divinity palette that I still haven't tried and I really want to try. Second of all, because it's my favorite color. Third, because the color purple is associated with royalty and luxury, so thought it was only fitting. I'm going to start off with this color right here for my transition. Just like last time, I am barely dipping in to the color. I think, honestly, I think I'm going to do the same eye shape that I did with my red look from this palette. I might change it up a little bit, but I kind of really, really like that eye shape. So I'm just going to roll with it. I'm going to apply it under my bottom lash line too. I'm just creating a sort of point, a V shape. I'm sorry if you guys are seeing the same sort of eye shape twice. But there are some people who all they do is cut creases, so can't really judge me. One day I might try doing a neutral look with this palette. Today is not that day. 
I want this eye to be very, very bold, very, very luxurious looking, very, very out there, even more so than the red look that I did with this palette. I want this to be a very memorable look for you to wear to a party. Before filming, I had turned on two heaters in the bedroom because I was freezing and now I am like sweating so much because of the wig and the lights. So that's fun. Oh, this was the NYX number 16 brush, by the way. Then I'm going to take the Luxie Small Tapered Blending Brush, and I am going to dip in to this color right here. I'm a little bit scared because it looks so dark, but let's do this. I'm going to ooh, start on the outer corner. It is very dark indeed but it blends really beautifully into that transition color. I'm taking the smallest amount of product so that I don't have a hard time blending it out. Taking a bit more product onto my lower lash line. Oh, that's a pretty color. <gasps> oh, okay, this color is like, I don't know if it's unique, I think it is because it's pretty hard to get a formula for this color right. They're usually not so dark or they're really, really patchy when they're like a really deep plum. This one seems to be really good. I'm bringing that in kind of to meet my nose contour. Okay, so I'm really liking this. I feel like I want to take some more of that transition color just so I can kind of extend the shape a little bit. I don't want to use the purple so that it doesn't get too dark. Whoa, that looks super dark. What did I do there? I think I might have taken too much shadow on my brush. Ooh, I don't like that. What have I done? Blend, blend, blend my problems away. I think my alarm stopped beeping. <gasps> Is that true? It's been beeping literally all day, ever since I woke up this morning. Okay, I'm taking a clean brush just to blend that out a bit. I think I made a bit of a boo-boo. I took too much eyeshadow on my brush. And then taking my little brush with the purple and intensifying that a little bit more. Blending it outwards a little bit more. Oh my god. My face is itching. Oh. This is how I scratch my face whenever I'm wearing makeup. I literally just tap on it. A lot of people complain that their makeup doesn't last, but they also don't realize how much they touch their face. I'm always super conscious about touching my face whenever I wear makeup. Like I never, ever, ever touch my face. I went ahead and intensified that purple a little bit more. Now I'm gonna move on to my lids. And for that, I'm gonna be using the Strobe Cosmetics Divinity Palette because I've been wanting to try out this color for the longest time. I've swatched it, still have not put it on my eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to go in with my finger and just Add it on. Should I use my finger for this? Oh no, I just got it on my, ugh. Let me try to fix this. Yeah, I'm gonna use a brush for this so that this doesn't happen. I accidentally got it onto my bottom lash line. You are not invited, ma'am. What are you doing down there? I'm gonna use a brush for this. Am I though? No, I'm gonna use my finger but be very careful with the application. That is purple, man. Then I'm taking my brush, and just blending it around the edges, I'm blending it close to the inner corner, but I am leaving my inner corner blank for a highlight to go in there later. Okay, because this color is very intense, that gives me room to intensify the darker purple a little bit more. So I'm gonna take a pencil brush. This is the MAC. The number on it's been erased, but I'll link it down below. And I'm gonna take that on my pencil brush so I can really concentrate the color and really darken up those outer edges and my crease. I'm also going to apply more of that under my eye. Then I'm taking that little Luxie brush and blending it out. I think I'm gonna take that pencil brush and just darken this inner crease line as well. I'm gonna take a new brush. This is the Moda crease brush and I'm gonna take that first transition color just a tiny bit and go over these edges. It is so pigmented. Ugh. 
Just want to soften everything a little bit and bring back that warm tone because I do quite like it peeking through. I'm also adding it to my bottom lash line. Now I want to add a little extra something and I'm going to zoom you guys in for this so that you can see it in all its glory. I know the image is a little darker but that way you can see colors a little bit better. So I'm going to leave it that way. And I'm going to go in with this color right here. It is the VR Fire Opal. And as you can see, there's a green pink shift to it. And I'm going to place that right in the center of my lid. I'm going to use my finger and look at that. Oh, it looks a little blue on top of this purple. Yeah, it looks almost blue, which is really interesting because it's definitely a green pink shift in the pan, but I just want to give the lid a little extra something. Oh, that's pretty. Oh my god. Same on the other eye. Look at that. That's just one little tap. Oh, adding a little bit more just closer to the lash line. Oh my god. On camera, it looks really different from in person. In person, you can see green, you can see blue, you can kind of see the pink. Let me darken this image even more. So you can see that shine. Now for the inner corner, I think I am going to go with that same gold that I used last time, but I've learned my lesson and I'm going to use a glitter primer with it. I'm going to be using the NYX glitter primer. It is my absolute favorite glitter primer of all time. I learned the hard way that this color is more like a pressed glitter rather than an eyeshadow, and I didn't use a glitter primer for it last time and it got all in my eyes. So this time I'm just going to add some glitter primer right to that corner and then I'm going to take that and press it on. Oh, that's so pretty. This time it is sticking to the primer so it's not going to go inside my eyes and scratch my eyeballs out. That color is so pretty. Let me darken this again so you guys can see that. That's looking really, really pretty. Hmm. I'm really happy about this. Now that both eyes are done, I think I might take this color up here onto my brow bone. Oh, it goes on very gold. It reminds me a lot of her highlighter from the trio that I have. Oh, that's like pure gold on there. Which reminds me, I forgot to put on my cream highlighter. I usually like to do it before eyes. I like to have skin kind of completely done before I move on. I'm gonna go in with the Milk Makeup Highlighter Stick in the color Lit. It looks like this. And I like to apply this with my fingers and I'm just going to pat it on. As you can see, it just makes the skin look wet. It doesn't really make it look like you're wearing highlighter, it just makes it look really wet. Which, as you may have noticed, is like my favorite thing in the world. Also going to apply that in between my eyes, on the bridge of my nose, and on the tip of my nose a little bit, and on my chin. Oh. This, honestly, this highlighter just makes the skin look so good. It's not even funny. Like, look at that. I do need to powder my nose though, but look at that. Now, because I want to feel extra rich and extra festive, I'm going to go in with this little baby. It's the Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm in the color How Many Carrots. And this is one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen in my life. I'm gonna layer it on top of this highlighter. I'm gonna take it on my little Moda Accentuate brush and then I'm going to apply it right on top. I'm patting it on because I don't want to move the cream that's under there. This is just like very finely milled glitter almost, but it just looks so pretty on the skin. I'm going to add that to my brow bone too to kind of minimize that gold a little bit. 
but it also helps to make the skin look wet even though it is kind of like just finely milled glitter it just makes the skin look really wet from a distance this on the body is gorgeous applying this kind of over everywhere where I applied the other highlighter let me darken the image again. Look at that shine. Oh. Wait, let me powder my nose so it doesn't look as nasty. I'm going to just quickly powder my nose. Just look at that skin. Oh, bitch. <laughs> I feel like I need a little bit of color to the cheeks, so I'm gonna go in with the ColourPop Fun With Friends Super Shock Cheek. And I typically apply this with a brush, but I think I'm gonna go in with my finger just cause I've got a lot of cream products going on here. Oh, that's quite pretty. Thought that maybe it would be a little bit too pink. But I think I like that with a purple. I like having a little bit of pink on the cheeks. And this doesn't look too exaggerated. I think this looks really natural on the skin. Just looks like a healthy glow. Ooh, I like that. And it does have a sheen to it, as you can see. So it helps even more with that kind of glass skin effect. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm just like, I can't stop staring at my skin. For the lips, I'm a little unsure of what to do. I swatched a few different options on my lips. That's why there's a little stain there. I think I'm gonna go in with the Ink of Elation Hazelnut Lipstick. I'm gonna try it, see if I like it. This is a little too nude and neutral for me. You guys know that I always love like a really, really bold lip, but I kind of want to see how this dries. I haven't used this color before. I feel like that's pretty. I might go with a darker color around it. I'm gonna go in with a color Pash, also by Ink of Elation. I'm gonna try that out to see how I like it on the outer edges. I think I like this lip color. I don't know. I'm not too convinced. I'm just used to slapping on a very dark, very bold lip. So this is throwing me off a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. So I still don't know about the lips. I think I'm gonna try adding a gloss on top. I know that is very unlike me. I'm gonna try it. If I hate it, I'll take it off. But recently I actually got to go to a Smashbox event and there they had a little DIY lip gloss station where you can mix your own lip glosses. And so I mixed four of them. I've got a purple, a blue, an orange, and a yellow. And this one I made it trying to dupe Cider by Black Moon. And I think I'm gonna pop a little bit of this one onto my lips and see how that looks. This is what it looks like. So let me try this out. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the lips. Ah! Hmm. I don't know, it's kind of growing on me a little bit. I like the kind of orange and purple contrast. I don't know. I'm gonna finish my eyes and then see how I feel about it. To line my waterline, I'm gonna go with the Milk Makeup Gel Liner in the color PTO. It's their holographic liner. So it looks a little something like this. And I'm gonna just line my waterline with that. Ooh, that's interesting. Haven't used this before, by the way. Don't wanna mess up my makeup, so a little trick is grab a Q-tip to pull your lid down. It adds a little bit of a lilac touch. Nice. Now for lashes, I'm gonna go in with the Hourglass Caution Mascara. This mascara is just really black and really intense, so I really love it for looks like this. See, that's just a really beautiful mascara and it is vegan and cruelty free. You know what? I was going to pop on some lashes, but I tried on a few different ones and they all kind of covered up the sparkle and I really don't want that. So I'm just going to apply a second coat of mascara to the outer corners, especially. 
And the last look I did with the Pat McGrath palette, a lot of you said you guys actually preferred the look without lashes. So I think I might do that this time around. I feel like nowadays there's such a pressure to wear lashes. People feel that a look isn't complete without lashes. And I honestly think that's a little bit bullshit. I think you should need lashes to complete your look. Sometimes they do really complement a look. They do add an extra something to the look, but you don't always need them. I have one like rogue lash on this side that's just way bigger than the other ones and it's really weird and it's just sticking out there. I think without lashes it looks a lot more editorial. Not that this look is editorial. I mean it could be. I don't know. I think this look could be editorial and using just mascara, I think, gives it that vibe even more. I am, however, going to clean up the edges of my lipstick with a little bit of concealer. I'm going to take my vanilla concealer on a little flat brush and just clean up the edges. Even though this lipstick isn't super dark, I still like to have really crisp lines. And of course, blend it out. I'm gonna take a little bit of the Hourglass Veil Powder just to mattify certain areas because it is really mattifying. So I'm just gonna mattify, ooh, that's a lot of powder, around my nose and in the center of my forehead. And I believe that is the look done. So yeah, I think that's it. I think it is really festive. I think it looks really rich. This skin is everything. I am just dying for this skin. It just looks like I've been getting a facial every single day of my life. I wish that were the case. I wish that were the actual truth, but it's not. And again, I feel really weird as a blonde. This is really weird for me, but you guys seem to like it. So brought her back. Anywho, I think, oh my god, I hadn't even realized, I think this is going to be my last video of the year. That hadn't even crossed my mind. <laughs> uh, how had I not realized that before? Oh boy, I don't know. But I hope you guys have a wonderful New Year's Eve celebration. I hope you guys had an amazing year, and I hope that 2019 is an even better year for all of us. Oh, I can't believe this is my last sign off of the year. I want to thank you guys so much for all the support I received this year. You guys have no idea how much it means to me. Even if this is the first video of mine that you're watching and you've just subscribed, I appreciate you so, so much. I appreciate every single one of you. You guys make it possible for me to do what I love and that is such an amazing feeling and I am forever grateful for that. Okay, now I'm going to stop being so sappy and I'm gonna let you get on with your day. I just hope you really liked this video. I just wanted to play around with some makeup and maybe give you a few ideas for New Year's Eve. I still don't know what I'm doing for New Year's Eve, actually. Should probably figure it out. And I guess that's it. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you next year. Bye.